In the radio studios of America, the technicians, the entertainers, the commentators, the administrative personnel daily unite their efforts in the creation of programs to please and entertain a vast radio public. The wide variety of broadcasts include group discussions, political speeches, sports, drama, and comedy. These are the programs that America listens to. That wide variety of broadcasts exemplified the golden age of radio. It was a prominent source of not just music, but all kinds of news and entertainment. But in the 1950s, television would change that. When AM radio was reinventing itself, when all the TV shows, the old, the long form TV shows and entertainment shows moved from radio to television, they had to put something on the air and they came up with the disc jockey concept, playing, in many cases, this new rock and roll music that nobody else was, was playing. Rock and roll is a river of music which has absorbed many streams, rhythm and blues, jazz, ragtime, cowboy songs, country songs, folk songs, all have contributed greatly to the big beat. It was a new type of radio. The disc jockeys, this whole concept of a disc jockey being on and, and spinning records was a concept that really hadn't existed at, at that size before in radio. It was a new type of radio, playing to a new generation, enamored with a new type of music. And with the introduction of inexpensive 45s, there was a rush of teens buying rock and roll records. These records became the way to hear music, and pretty soon they flooded the market as more and more artists tried to latch on to the rock and roll phenomenon. There were a lot of young kids that were coming up, and the record companies had invested in a uh, record session and uh, all of that. Record companies wanted a return on that investment, but with so many records competing for airtime on radio stations across the country, getting their artists heard was anything but a guarantee. Well, it was something brand new, and when you have something new, a lot of, a lot of times the rules haven't been established yet. And so it was like the wild, wild west. In this wild, wild west, the disc jockey was the sheriff having complete control over when and how many times a single was played. They understood the music. They were close to the kids. They were on the street. At a time when radio airplay was the number one way for labels to give their music exposure, DJs wielded remarkable power. But most record companies weren't willing to sit idly by and hope that a DJ might play their song. I don't think Many disc jockeys knowingly played a bad record because they had ratings back then, but there were shades of it, and, and obviously there was influence. That influence had a name, and it was Payola. Payola in our business was a record company or an artist coming in saying, hey, I got a new record coming out, here's 150 bucks. My definition of Payola is getting payment for putting something on the air. It can be records, it could be talking about a restaurant, it could be without proper att attribution on the air. Payola was a way of getting something that you wanted. And what the record companies wanted was lots of airtime. To get it, they padded DJ's pockets with cash or other incentives. Some reported receiving thousands of dollars. And up until that point, it really wasn't illegal as best that I recall. Not only was it not illegal, but it wasn't necessarily new. Payola had existed since the beginning of radio in some form or another, though certainly not on the scale that it grew to in the 1950s, becoming so prevalent that it eventually caught the attention of the United States Congress. It became such a big scandal because it was deceptive. People were, were, it was deceptive, and songs weren't being played because they were good. They were being played because somebody was paying off somebody. The time was ripe to expose deception. The public was particularly sensitive following the quiz show scandal, which unraveled in 1959, revealing extensive rigging to manipulate the drama. And that was television. 
So there was essentially you know, television not being honest with the listeners of how things were happening, and that was another big scandal. The Subcommittee on Legislative Oversight began its payola hearings in February 1960. And while many disc jockeys were involved, two would command the most attention, Dick Clark and Alan Freed. All right, let's get this prom rocking with Jimmy Cabello and the House Rockers and rock, rock, rock. Alan Freed is the guy that uh, coined rock and roll. He believed that rock and roll was the music to come, and he was right. The only problem is that all the payola talk and everything killed him as far as getting anything. Alan Freed's career was destroyed by the payola scandal, blacklisted by radio stations everywhere. Dick Clark, on the other hand, the clean-cut host of American Bandstand, would emerge nearly unscathed, divesting himself of all his musical interests in order to save his career. Payola was subsequently declared illegal, and DJs would soon be stripped of nearly all their control. The disc jockeys lost control of the music. The, the control of what got played on radio then moved to management, and it was up to management, the program director and music director, to decide what got on the radio. Before, Alan Freed could play anything he wanted and most other disc jockeys. Then after the payola scandal, Mr. General Manager of the radio station and program director said, whoa, we don't want our disc jockeys taking payola. We'll pick the music to play. It is much more difficult to get a record on. There, in many cases, um, it has to demonstrate in some way that it's worth playing. If you look around today, you're gonna to find more and more radio stations where there's no personality, really. You've got people that are saying, okay, here's your show, four hours. You can talk four times uh, during an hour, but for eight seconds. Payola is bribery. And, and I think people like to know what decisions are being made on the radio or on the television, which is licensed by the government, to be honest. For better or for worse, the wild, wild west of radio was over. There was a new sheriff in town, taking the reins and carrying radio on into the next stage of its evolution.